Hi, and welcome back to episode two. In this episode, we're going to go over your stance and also footwork for distance control. Now, it's very important to be in a good position where we're not so vulnerable and we can be tipped over or pushed over so easily. In the day, we want to stay grounded and have good stability and structure when dealing with any confrontation. The last thing we want to do is slip and fall over. I'm going to take two steps forward like I'm walking. So if I'm going to start with my right leg, one, two, and I'm going to stop exactly where I am. My feet should be shoulder width apart. My lead toes should be facing 12 o'clock. My rear toes should be facing 2 o'clock. I should have a slight bend in my knees. This will give me the foundation stability so I've got, it can't be knocked off my feet. My hands are always in the ready position. I do not make a fist. If I make a fist to an attacker, he knows I'm going to fight back and the fight is definitely on. I like to have my hands in a passive position because at the end of the day, I'm trying to outsmart my attacker because this is no different than actually having my fist closed. But this here looks more passive. Movement is the key. Distance is your friend. Do not be in harm's way. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go over the first movement. is called the step. I start off in my stance. I'm going to step forward, leading with my front leg, but pushing off with my back leg. And I should always remain in my stance. If I move backwards, I'm going to step back with my back leg, but pushing off my front leg. If I'm going to move to my left, I'm going to push off my right leg, but lead with my left leg. And vice versa to go back to the right. I'm going to push off my left leg and step with my right foot. But once again, the key is to always land in your stance. The second bit of footwork, which means you're going to cover more distance, is called the shuffle. If I'm going to shuffle forward, I'm going to use my rear leg first. And it's called a shuffle for a reason. You want to hear yourself shuffle on the ground. If I'm going to move backwards, it's going to be my lead foot first. And then you can see the distance I gained from a step to a shuffle. Once we've done the step and the shuffle, then we're going to work on our pivot. Maybe the attack is facing me, maybe he's facing to the right, maybe I need to pivot back. Another footwork that we work with is the circling. So I want to circle out and then circle back. So you always want to practice circling left and right without never ever crossing your feet. This here is not a good position. I always want my left foot to lead to the left and my right foot to lead to the right. All the while keeping my hands up for protection. When you become comfortable with this footwork, then another good one to do is to change your stance to get away. Once I've changed my stance, then I also do need to practice the same footwork on my other stance because this will make your movement more efficient. Now that we've established the stance, it's very important for us to test the stance. So now I've got my partner Charlie here to assist me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stand like in a normal position without even having any stability or foundation. And Charlie is going to come and give me a push. From there you can see that I topple over because as soon as my head goes past my feet, I'm going to lose balance. Now we're going to do the same, but now me being in my stance. So now I can ride with it, keeping my posture. Charlie's still going to demonstrate this from the side now. So I'm just standing like normal, he's going to push me half from the side. You can see it's very easy for me to lose my balance and lose control. Now I'm in my stance, Charlie's going to give me a push from the side. I can ride with it, keeping my posture. Now we're going to go deeper into the footwork training. So now we have established some of the footwork and obviously the stance. So now it's very important to also test this. It's all about understanding distance control. Distance is your friend when it comes to a potential threat. Now, I'm going to be the attacker here and Charlie's going to be the defender. So Charlie, for this drill, is going to basically mirror me what I'm doing. If I move forward on him, he's going to move backwards. If I move backwards, he moves forwards. 
From a self-defense perspective, if I move backwards as an attacker, it's not viable for him to come forward at me. However, for training, it's very good to understand your different angles of movement. So right now, if I push upon Charlie, he takes a step back. If I step back, he comes forward. If I step to my left, he steps to his right. And to the other side. Sometimes I want to rush Charlie, he creates distance. Same moving backwards. If I want to circle, for an example, there's an obstacle between me and Charlie, and I want to get around the obstacle to get him, he's going to the other side of the obstacle. And it's basically a cat and mouse chase. All you're doing is trying to buy yourself survival time. The more time that you can survive, the more time that you can have help coming your way, assistance, or even you have an opening to defuse a situation to get home safely to the loved ones. Thank you for joining me in episode 2 and I look forward to seeing you in episode 3. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can see some more videos in the future. Thank you.